I'm Christian, and welcome to the Jamoir Leadership Podcast, a show where we talk about effective collaboration, influence, and leadership in an increasingly complex world. My interview partner is Dr. Dirk Schlimm. Dirk is an international leadership expert and the author of Influencing Powerful People. The purpose of this podcast is to share ideas and stimulate discussion, and it does not constitute professional advice of any kind. If such advice is needed, the services of a competent professional should be sought. The speakers, host, and Gemar International Incorporated are not to be held responsible for any use, misuse, or reuse of the content. Enjoy the show. Welcome back, everyone, to the Jamar Leadership Podcast. This is Christian. I just want to let you know as a brief note that this is part two to a two-part conversation between Dirk Schlem and Neil Cause. So if you're just tuning in now and you missed part one, please pause the episode, go listen to the one right before this so that you can join into the conversation now. But anyway, if you're here for part two, let's dive right in. Now, I, I know you as a, a, a very analytical uh, person in, in, in some way, and, and I'm interested in this topic on, on how do people really, really make decisions. And, and so there's this idea out there that people take a piece of paper, they, they draw a line in the middle, and they say, here are the pros and here are the cons. And then if, if, if one is longer, that's, that's where I'm going gonna to go. And, and you have analyzed this topic of, of uh, competition collaboration um, at some level. But, but I'm also picking up this, say, hey, I just think this is a better way of, of, of doing it. And, and so, in other words, some things just also come naturally to us we we prefer a a certain approach because it's it's more in sync with in line with uh who we are and where i want to want to go with this with this comments is to me there's an interplay of corporate strategy and corporate culture and and i think that corporate culture can be very powerful and 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 i may have even this predisposition to uh, collaboration over over competition and and so this is where i'm going naturally unless there's really strong evidence to the contrary so so just want to see uh, want to ask you how do you see that corporate culture and wanting things to do a certain way versus strategy maybe being more analytical how do how do you see how do you see those two interplay between strategy and, and, and culture in, in a business like Geotab? I think it's, um, I think the two link, you know, uh, hand in glove. And I think you need to build your your corporate culture around what you think is the right strategy um, and not the other way around. So in some sense, <clears throat> you know, Geotab, we have one of our philosophies we have at Geotab is do the right thing. Now, obviously, there's kind of a moral imperative that says that um, you know, I want I want to do that anyway, but but let's just pull the moral side out for a second and go. You know, what strategy would would we have that goes? Okay, do the right thing. Listen, you know, we're not a charity, right? We can't afford to be like we can't afford to just you know give all the money away or or do stuff that that isn't going to ultimately lead to us making money that isn't going to allow us to continue continue to work. But I think in that example over there, do the right thing. What we found through kind of numerous examples is that, you know, and, and we've probably seen this in our own lives, is that it's kind of, you know, if you do the right thing, that ultimately that will come back and help you one day. And there's so many examples that we have in business of, you know, yes, we could have sold them something that wasn't right. And, you know, we would have made a lot of short-term money. But at some point they would have realized, hold on, that wasn't the right thing or I didn't trust the advice that came from Geotab. Um, and then, um, you know, the, the next set of business doesn't come, come from Geotab. And I think that if you, if you know that ultimately you care about the long-term, if you're saying, I want to be successful in the long-term, then you give up the short-term. You go, look, let me give them the best advice I can possibly give. Let me do the right thing here. If, if there is a mistake or we've, you know, whatever, let's fix it. And it doesn't matter that it's not in our financial interest to fix it, but it's hurting the customer. Let's put ourselves in the customer's shoes always. And I think that that philosophy works. And even from a business point of view, like we talk about open standards and open source, where um, you know, we have a different path to go. We could go and build everything that's very, very proprietary, or we can create things that are based on standards. Now, the thing that's things that are based on standards typically help the consumer and they kind of hurt the leader because it allows choice, right? If you are a consumer and you go, well, you know, I 
there's a standard for the operating system that runs on my phone. It's Android, right? And I can buy an Android phone from Samsung. I can buy one from Google. Well, then it's going to create competition. And it's no longer Google that sells every single phone to everybody in the world. Um, now I have choice. But I think if you look at the crystal ball in the long run, this is what I've always done. I've said that, you know, ultimately what is right will win. And if what is right is having competition and having choice and allowing customers you know, the ability to move one day because Geotab's not doing a good job um, and being able to select another vendor, then we must embrace that. We must, we must say that this is right for the customer and what's right for the customer means make it right for Geotab. And, you know, this is, you, you're right. Like you set the kind of strategy on the one hand and now you need to pull it into the corporate culture. You need to make sure that the values that Geotab sticks to match up with that kind of strategy. And and that at every level that that the 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 that these things are one and one and the same. So yeah, that that's I think very important. Yeah. So so Neil, thanks and and thanks for bringing the 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 values discussion into this and and doing the right thing. And and I believe that's especially important in well, in any industry, but but really for 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 geotype as a data driven business. And you mentioned that earlier. People entrust us. With their uh, uh, with their with their data that it's handled properly, that it's handled securely, that it's handled in according with with good privacy principles, and and that's something that yeah you lay out your program what it be and maybe even in, in in a policy, but it but it's also this idea of trust and building that reputation of being a a trustworthy partner, and I believe that's so important if you do have a strategy that is dependent on partnerships that emphasizes partnerships the ecosystem you have to have that 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 reputation as a good as a good partner and and so if we maybe you can go one more time into this idea of ecosystem you mentioned that that, that term today and partnership moving together uh, again maybe one more time you can touch on how partnership and ecosystem has really contributed, I think, massively to uh, Geotab success and how that, that strategy of thinking in these terms really has propelled uh, much of the growth that you've, uh, that we've, uh, that we've seen. Yeah, yeah. It, it certainly has. And I, I want to be honest and, and not just claim that this is, you know, I would not have classed myself as an amazing strategist in 2001 2002 going okay you know i can see i'm setting a nice strategy for geotab here it's written on special paper and i'm framing it up there and we thought about all of this stuff I, I have to be honest it was somewhat accidental and it's kind of easy after the fact to go back and kind of pat ourselves on the back i'll tell you why the strategy for the ecosystem actually came up um it was a little bit of a, a strange thing when we started working out of the basement you know way back with geotab one of the goals that we had was to keep this company really, really small. And so we said, we're going to measure our success based on profit per person, not based on total profit. And so if we were making, you know, $10,000 that year and we had 10 people, well, we're only making a thousand. You know, if, if we had one person, we were making 10,000. So what that meant was that we had to say, we're going to hire the minimum number of people that we possibly can. And, and in order to do that, we have to outsource everything. We had to outsource our office space. We had to outsource our manufacturing. We had to outsource sales and marketing. And that focus on outsourcing is really what spurred the ecosystem. It kind of, you know, and then we realized that, yeah, you, 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 you were giving money away in some sense. You were selling, the first time we had somebody selling the Geotech product, we would kind of help them um, sell them. We would nurture it. We would show them the way. And we could have made a lot more money by just taking that customer straight in. But we invested in the future and that partner then, oh, I can make money out of doing this. Now I know how to do it. And then, you know, that really got us the kind of critical mass. And so today, it uh, absolutely categorical. If you compare Geotab to any one of our competitors, the single thing that you notice is that we are about partnerships and that we're doing everything that we can to invest in those partnerships. Now, I'm not going to claim it's easy. There are circumstances where you have conflict, right? Where you have two partners competing against one another. Even in the data example, right? So we're collecting a lot of you know, very important data from, from the use of fleets. And we create these aggregate data sets that tell you interesting things about what's happening in our world. And we always have this problem about sometimes that data can be a double-edged sword. So then, let me give you one example. If we know where all the truck parking locations are, 
for every single truck in, in the United States. We know where they park overnight. That data set is very useful to be able to know where to put hotels up, you know, um, you know, how to build new infrastructure to make sure we're looking after the truckers. You know, the roads can be built properly so that we know the volume of traffic that's moving in and out. And that data is made available to, you know, to, to, to everybody. Um, the problem is if you want to steal goods out of trucks, now you know where they are at night. And so there's this very tricky compromise that you unfortunately make in life, right? It isn't, it isn't okay, good, bad. That's not the world that we live in. It's a little bit nuanced. And so you walk in this fine line of trying to be, you know, the good smart and trying to put yourself in as many people's shoes as possible going, is this more good than bad? And is this better for society to have it or not? And, and so I think, again, you, you know, that focus on that, you know, is, is the right thing. And it's, it's about trust. It's about ultimately, you know, you taking your customer's data, you know, some of the very largest companies in the world that go, we trust your tab is going to do the right thing. And our reputation is everything. And, you know, the ecosystem and the, the partners that are in that ecosystem, you know, they, they work with us because of that, that trust element. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's absolutely critical. It is the cornerstone and foundation of who we are. Yeah, uh, Neil, thanks. And obviously, I'm very uh, familiar with those discussions. We do have a data ethics uh, committee, actually, at GeoTap that, that looks at those things and what is the right thing to do. And as you're saying, bringing in different perspectives and, and, and looking at this from different vantage points. Um, but you said something, uh, because I'm trying to uh, change tack here now just, just, just a little bit, you said it's not easy. And, and that, that's maybe uh, the, the obvious uh, statement, but, but what it's prompts in me is to say, okay, strategy is thinking big, it's about the future, but, but boy, there also is execution, right? There's also getting it done, and then you find out how hard it really is and, and how good or not so good your strategic plan really is. So, Tell us a little bit about strategy, execution. How have you experienced that other tension? Let, let's call it the second tension that we that we talk about today here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know what? I I did a little bit of lecturing at the U of T for the at, at one stage for the uh, engineering students, um, second and fourth year students, um, and it was around entrepreneurship. And I remember um, after one of the lectures. Uh, one of the guys came up and says, said to me, listen, I want to get your idea. I have this most incredible idea, and but I can't tell you what it is because you, you, you might steal it. And, um, you know, I, I want to know where to start or whatever. And, and I bring this kind of conversation up quite often where the world is actually filled with so many amazing ideas. There are, if you go to, you know, a big tech conference or any kind of conference and you walk around and you look at the, the tables um, and you look at people going, oh, I've got this thing to sell you or this idea. The world is filled with millions and millions and millions of ideas. And I think it's, it's yes, you cannot, if you start with a bad strategy, if you, you know, if you don't follow the principles that we've all talked about here, um, you will never ever be successful. But there's another table stakes. You have to be able to execute. You have to be world-class at execution and that means that you know taking that strategy and turning it into reality dealing with the minutia of the day-to-day -day details who am i hiring who's going to do that did did we get back to the customer did we let them know did we fix the issue you know what's next deadlines process you know sales and marketing you know it is fundamental and if you don't have that drive if you don't make sure that you're good at execution all of the best strategy in the world will fail and that really is, you know, a different set of skills too. You know, the two, you know, can sometimes overlap a little bit, but um, it is taking you maybe a different side of your brain. Like really now it is about lists and management and, you know, people and motivating people and um, keeping things on track and again, seeing the bigger picture. What is the most important item today that we need to focus on? Um, and really, yeah, I mean, the two go hand in glove and you don't have one without the other, truly. And actually, the, the, the last two questions I want to uh, put into a bit more into the, the here and now. And so two more, one, 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 one and two. And, and, and thanks so much for, uh, for, your, for your time here uh, this morning. But th there is this tradition of strategy where this is really something reserved for the C-suite and for 
the board of directors and they're sitting in a secret room and they they write up the strategy and then they put it somewhere secret so it's a very exclusive uh view of of strategy and here here on the podcast we're always interested okay there's a the big view from the CAO, but then there's also manager and then professionals throughout the organization. And how do these big principles really apply apply to them? And I'm just wondering, how would you look at strategy, not just the big strategy of the firm that may be a bit far away from people, but also people who are running their departments, who are running their team, or they just want to contribute to the strategy discussion in the company they're in. So, so how do you see uh, uh, strategy, let's say, a bit of a democratic kind of concept that is really important for for everybody in the company and is not reserved for a few people who are uh, who are at the very top. What what would your view on that on that be? Yeah. I, mean, I do see strategy very much in layers, right? So if if you have a bigger picture strategy that says that you know we want to connect all the vehicles and you know make make the data available to everybody. And then you go kind of one layer down into the onion and you look at somebody running a particular department and that particular department might be say the legal department at geotap or you know might be some of the it departments i think that that particular department needs to have a strategy that lines up with with the bigger strategy and so i think that in that department we have to think deeply about okay well what is happening in the world of data legislation what is you know gdpr doing what is ccpa doing where is the world moving in terms of you know privacy uh, what are the concerns that we're going to see if now you've got your own crystal ball going you know i'm looking in this crystal ball going well i'm seeing some problems over there you know from legislation coming from this country or this is an opportunity or you know maybe we behind here and i think that every single department right and bit, you work that all the way down to the individual there are layers of strategy that need to be taken into account and you know i think every single person who has a job anywhere should be thinking strategy and i don't know you know how often you want to do it whether it's once a month or once a quarter or maybe you know on the new year but you've got to sit down and you got to plan it out you got to say my job this year is to achieve this right and and i need to achieve that because it's going to help you know the bigger picture strategy achieve why and now you go, my strategy to achieve that, how am I going to do that? What is, what are the things that are going to impact me this year and the next year and the year after? What is going to change? What new technology is going to be available for me to take advantage of? What change is going to happen in the world around me? And how is that going to impact how I think about things? And the work that I'm doing, is it going to be null and void because, you know, things are changing and this is going to be more important in the future. So I think strategy is vital for each and every single one of us. And we don't always have to think about, you know, us as saying, well, we have to think about the biggest, bigger, bigger picture strategy. Yes, I think many leaders will welcome input. And anybody who says, listen, I've got some great ideas about where I think the world's going to be in 10 years that maybe JetTab should take advantage of, brilliant. Like bring that in. Like many people on the ground, in front of customers, in the face of customers, will understand things that you know leadership gets a little disconnected, wouldn't understand. So, so bring that forward, but make no mistake, strategy is so critical to each and every single one of us. Yeah. So, so Neil, really appreciate your your saying that, and I want to emphasize it here to to the to to our listeners. So, no matter where you are, you can think strategically and you can act uh, strategically. And and as Neil, as you said, it's really very much uh, part of the job of of, of anyone uh, in the company. So so thank you for for that uh, uh, encouragement. I, I think that that's really uh, an important uh, important statement uh, a statement to make. So very last question here for you, and and it, it's really picking up on the things that we've been uh, that we've been talking about. And you in the very beginning you took us back to to the basement when you when you started and and look look at at, at Geotab now. And but there must have been uh, a development, and I think you touched on it, but maybe I do want to ask this as a last question. Where would you say my thinking has evolved? Yes, I, here is where I started as an entrepreneur, and and now it's it's a much 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 larger company, recognized as a as a world leader in its in its field. And so surely your thinking must have evolved, and maybe you can show that a little bit by saying, "Hey, I thought about it like this first. Now I'm thinking about it differently. Not that one is right or wrong, but it's just depending on where you are, your perspective changes, and I believe it even must change. Maybe you can just touch on." that a little bit as a bit of a closing closing comment here. Yeah, I mean, it certainly has evolved and changed. I mean, I think um, 
over the years, you know, it, it, it's instilled more on me than ever that execution of strategy is is just as important or more important than even the strategy itself, right? It's just execution is so hard. And I think that's something that kind of lives with me. In terms of the, the way strategies evolve too, I, th I think it's different. It's, you you know, focus is vitally important. Um, you know, you, you can want to own the world and be the best at everything, but, you know, picking a narrow niche, focusing on that, winning at that, being best in the world at that before you move on to the next piece is one that certainly evolved quite strongly to me. Um, and, and, and then I think is different to what I, you know, as, as I think is when you're young, you don't know what you don't know. And it's, it's, you know, we say this to our customers too. It's like, you know, if you're not measuring, how do you know what is around the corner? You can't even see around the corner when you realize that, Oh, I had all this opportunity to improve. And it's the same thing when you're young and, and maybe that's, you know, it's the power of youth. You don't know, that it's harder than you think. You don't know that there's going to be 59 million obstacles, that it's actually Everest you're climbing. You're climbing a, a small wall. You know, you can't see what's on the other side there, right? And it's a good thing because you keep going. You go, I'm not stopping. And you get to Everest. Not If you looked at Everest when you started, you'd be like, this is not going to work. So I, I, I think that, you know, um, you, you realize once you've got to the top of Everest and you kind of reflect back and you go, I would never have done that. But now that you're there, you go, this this is cool. So I think that, you know, maybe it's not always that you, you want to necessarily have all that information when you when you first start. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting to see how strategy has evolved. And I think um, keeping that connection, I, I do think that the youth does see things from a strategic point of view um, that, that, that older people don't see because they are more connected to society. Like, I think that youth is more in play with what's happening in social media. What are the trends? What are my friends saying? What are they, what are, what's important to me? Like what's important to me is, is much more, is going to matter much more than when my dad's long gone. Um, and I am now, you know, our generation is running the world, you know, we're in charge and I don't care that dad cared about, you know, that what I care about matters. So I'm very interested. I think it's an important element too. We got to listen to, you know, to, to the youth and we got to make sure we try and keep that youthfulness in us and listen to them and, and learn from them. And, and I think that's, that's part of it as well. So yeah, maybe that's a, a good way to finish off there. Uh, a great way to finish off. And you mentioned uh, Everest. We just did it. We climbed uh, Everest in this <laughs> in this podcast. And the, uh, so, so thank you so much. And, and thank you for being so generous with uh, with your time. But you also mentioned you. So Christian, this is our our cue to to turn it uh, to turn it back to uh, to you. I think I'm getting the signal. That's all the time we have. So so Neil, thanks so much. And Christian, maybe we can turn it back to you for for some closing commentary. Yes, that that that's all the time, Dirk. And again, thank you so much, Neil. That time really flew by. And I can safely say I learned so much that I'm sure I'll be able to apply in my studies as well and just navigating all that. So truly well, well worth the wait to finally get you on here, Neil. And that was such a great conversation. So just to summarize a little bit here, as we always do, and to close it out and just again grateful for this conversation because geotab really is a fascinating story that i think a lot of people listening to this can learn a lot from your experience neil and just how you've navigated strategy and the shifting landscape so just a few points uh for a takeaway here strategy is not always about the long term it and the big picture though that's important what i think we learned here today is that it's also about competing and collaborating the firm and the ecosystem building a successful business and having a purpose. That was a big theme. And of course, I think just building from that, it's also about responding effectively to change new challenges and those shifting landscapes. And of course, business strategy in our day is also very much about the data. It's a fascinating topic. I hope everyone listening has learned as much as I have, but that is again, all the time we have for this week. So people, please feel free, reach out if you have any questions or comments. We always appreciate the feedback and we're so grateful to have our first guest on the on the show here, but that's all we have. So tune in again in two weeks on the Gemoir Leadership Podcast, and we'll continue the conversation. But until then, take care. Bye.